Hello guys and welcome to another PyCute video here on the Mad Pony Interactive channel. Even though this video's title is Animate Path Strokes, we're gonna start by creating a tooltip that follows the mouse around and gives us the X and Y coordinates. Then we're gonna jump in QPainter and look at drawing points in QPainter. We're gonna quickly go over polygons and polylines and effective ways that you can create them. We're also gonna quickly touch the signals and slots in Qt Designer, adding them to custom widgets. Then we're gonna go into drawing and animating lines with Q Painter and Q Timeline. We're gonna have a quick look at cubic and quadratic Bezier curves as well. And finally, we're gonna learn how we can do path stroke animations. Okay, so I'm gonna start by creating a project using MatQt Project Manager. So, new project, I'll call this Q Painter Toots, and I'll just place it here in the in a folder my Q painter select that create that project and for this I'm going to use a, a Q widget UI here so I'll create that UI and I'm going to use a, a module that's going to inherit from Q widget and I'll just call this canvas because this is going to be the can the widget that we're going to use for painting on so I might as well create a sublime project for this I'll just copy this, go here into project and save this as printer toots. So I'll open up this canvas. I'll simplify this because we only need the parent. So we know we're going to need a paint event, obviously. I know I'm going to use anti aliasing so I'm going to start my paint event just like that. I'll add the size in so that we have some size when we test this. And I'll turn the canvas into an application windows so that a new window so that we can test it here. Now I'd like to have some indication of the X and Y position at all times. I could create a label and just throw the text in there, but I'll do it. I'll do something different. I'll use a tooltip. Now to catch my mouse move event, and I'll print it like that. So if I just do that, moving my mouse is not going to do anything. I actually have to press my mouse button and then start moving in order to see the numbers pop up. What we have to do in order for the mouse to grab the mouse move event without pressing anything is set mouse tracking to true. When I set mouse tracking to true, the mouse move event is now going to trigger even if I don't press the mouse button, as you can see. Now inside of my mouse move event, I, could, I can trigger a Q, a Q tool tip just like this, saying show text and say go to the mouse position and just trigger uh, for now um, say something saying hello and if I, if I try this I get an error because uh, this is Q point float and I need the Q point uh, in integer mode so to get that I can say two, two point and now MP is a Q point not a Q point F and I can just print this So now my tooltip is on my left monitor, on, on the far left of my screen, because even though I'm, I'm getting the right numbers down here in the print statement, as you can see, 0, 0 here for the widget, my tooltip thinks I'm talking about the whole screen. So I need to map this value to the global position. So now if I say self map to global, self the widget, the canvas, and I grab that uh, mouse position and I say to point here because I wanna I wanna grab this position as it is later on uh, I'll print it here and I'll show the text now and let's see what happens okay now now it shows up where my mouse was initially you can see that it doesn't update because we're not updating the text of the label if I now update the text of the label with the following like so it's just an f string this is string and i'm grabbing m p x and mouse position y and i'm just doing a, a line break here so that the y is on a different line so if i now try that you can see that it works as we want it to work so i'll just add some offset here just to bring that up and to the right just to get it out of the way Okay, and now we have this result. We always know what our X and Y is, 
and we can also turn this into an integer so we don't have that leading zero like so okay so now we got we know what x is and what y is at all times okay let's look at drawing points if i for example say draw point at 50 pixels x and 50 pixels y and i run this i got a point right there right now it's tiny so let's make that point big by giving it a pen with five pixels okay so now we can see that point at 50 50 as you can see there let's say i want to place something in the center of my painter of my widget we already seen in other videos that event rect in a paint event gives us the area that where we're painting on so if i if I run this here, you can see it's 400 by 400, which is our size int. If I, for example, change the size, you can see the, the size changing there. Now, because it's a QREC that we're getting here, we could look at its center. So, if I grab the center, it's going to give me the center of the widget. Okay? Because this is a Q point, I can grab this, place this in here, and now we can draw a point right in the center of our widget. So if I make my pen 50 pixels, I get a little square in the center. And as we've seen before, if we go into the documentation and we look at QPen, we got uh, we can make we can change the pen cap style with C with the C property and we could choose this round cap for example so if I say C equals QT round cap and I run this now we got a circle from a point let's do the following I want every time I, I press somewhere in my widget I want a point to appear where I pressed let's do that for that we can use draw points and draw points takes in a list as you can see here with different points so I have a list with two points one at 20 20 20x 20 20y and one with 30x and 30y and I get these two points here okay one at 20 another one at 30 30 with that in mind I could perhaps create a list like this uh, where I would add my points and then in each mouse press event I would add a point to that list and then place the, that list down here like so and those points would get drawn now we have something a lot more efficient than a Python list and that is called Q point list you cannot find Q point list in the documentation at least not yet but I found it in one of the examples provided for PySight now you can see that Q point list wraps a C Q list, Q point, a Q list of Q points directly, removing the need to convert a Python list in each call to Q Painter, draw points, or draw polyline, or draw polygon, or whatever. You see the picture. So every time you're working with a list of points, you can take advantage of Q point list, which is a lot faster than using a normal Python list. Now that we have our list and we are drawing the points of that list down here in the paint event, all we need to do is add points to that list. So we can create our mouse press event, say self points, append the event position. Now if I do that and I click somewhere in here, I get an error. And this error is because it doesn't want a Q point F, it wants a Q point so we make it to point and now we don't have that error but when I click nothing happens that's because we need to update our widget by calling self update it's going to create a repaint on the paint event and now if we click we have all those points if I now turn draw points into something else like for example draw polyline now I press one place and there's a point added there 
and I press another place and now it draws a, a line from one point to the other and if I keep adding points it keeps adding lines to my polyline now draw points draw polyline draw polygon they can all take an argument of a polygon so if I make a polygon here and I place my points inside that polygon and then I throw in that polygon inside of draw polyline I should have the same result so if I now set a brush polyline is not going to do anything with that brush but polygon will so if I turn this into polygon okay now we got a fill on our polygon and I can use that same polygon to draw other stuff like we have here draw points I'm resetting my pen this time to be green and a little bit bigger than the previous pen and I'm drawing points in my polygon as well so I get this result I'll add the polyline on top of this just for fun and now we get this result see that our polygon is closed but our polyline is not if we were working with a path we could just call close path and that would close it let's um, just for the fun of it and just to look at one thing that polygon has and Qpainter paths have as well is check if a point is contained for example right now I'm going around this point here and I'm the point disappears because my path is on top of the point let's let's try and do the following once my path gets on top of the point I'll make my point go on top of the path so I placed my point in a center point variable here and I'm drawing that point still here and I'm using for our polygon I'm using contains point and contains point takes a point and takes the type of fill and you can see in the documentation we got two fill types okay even odd even and winding fill now for our example and this is in Q polygon okay so if you press fill rule it will take you to the two t different types of fill rule now for our example both of them are gonna return true and I can show you that right away by printing that statement and you can see false false true the point is contained inside of the polygon so if I turn this print statement into an if else statement now I can draw my point again like so and it's gonna get the the last pen that we used but that's fine Boop. tiny tiny point because that's the last pen that we used I can just change that pen to that for example Let's look at how we can animate our QPainter draw calls. We already looked at QProperty animation. For that we need to create properties and all that. Today I'm going to show you a different way of animating using QTimeline. So for that I'm going to create some controls so that we can easily control our animation within our project here. So if I go back to my project manager uh, we didn't add that custom widget to our UI so I'll open this up by double clicking and opening in Qt Designer and now to the grab that widget we can grab this just the widget here and I'll right click and promote to canvas I'll add a couple of buttons here just for example one for playing or actually start the animation and I'll add another one I'll place them in a, a layout of their own and I'll turn this layout into a, a vertical layout now you can see my widget is not taking up all the space I want it to so I can come into my form here and change my layout settings to the first one to occupy the most space okay so if I save that go back into my project manager and refresh and now if I play everything is according to plan and we have a start and a reverse button for our animation 
Now to get f functionality to our buttons, we could go into our project and open up our main project here. And I'll just get rid of all this code here. Actually, I'm going to use a subclass here so and do stuff with it in a more elegant way here. Our main window is a queue widget, so it doesn't have a central widget. It's not a main window. It's not a queue main window. So in here I can already access my push buttons and I added the first push button so that it's called push button. So if I just print that out to make sure that it is there, you can see that I have my push button here. So I could I could potentially do a on pressed connect and place in a method here. Something like that and we've seen this in action. So I want to show you a different way when you're using custom widgets. So I'm going to remove all this and I'm going to create a method here and instead I'm not even going to subclass main window. I'll just do it like this like we had before. I'm going to go back into Qt Designer. I'm going to go into Signals. I'm going to grab this Start button and I'm going to drop that into our um, Canvas widget. So if I press that edit button, I can add slots and signals to our widget. Let's add a call, uh, a slot called play animation. And another one called reverse animation. Say OK. And for this one, this is the start. So when it's clicked, I want to play the animation. Okay, and then I'll do the same for reverse. When it's clicked, I want to reverse animation and press OK. Now we got those two signals in here. I'll save my UI, Control S. I'll go back to my canvas widget here. And in here, I can write down those slots, just like that. So if I go back here and I refresh just to make sure that all the everything is correct there. And now to see the this in action, I can go to my main here so that I have a log here and I can see that they're working without having to do any connections or anything like that in code. Let's start with something simple. Let's talk about the objective of what we are about to do. I want to be able to draw two points like this without a line and then when I press play on those buttons I'll draw a line with the animation let's try and do that so what I'll do is I'll draw my points either way uh, using my point list Q point list that we saw before and all I'm doing here is I'm asking a question I'm looking at the length of points how many points we have and if it's not in the range of two points Let's see what this print statement gives us. So it's false, still false, and as soon as I have two points, it becomes true. So with two points, I can create a queue line. So if I turn my print statement into a if else statement, and then in here I can create a queue line going from point zero to point one, and then on my queue painter, I'll draw that line. So here we're going to get this result. Okay, and of course I can add other points and nothing's going to happen. So we know we want to animate from point 0 to point 1. So this point 1 needs to be a dynamic variable that will animate with the queue timeline. So we know we need a queue timeline, so let's do that. Now queue timeline has a few methods like setting a frame range and then we can check that frame range. But we also have value change. So if I set up a queue, uh, queue timeline here uh, with 1000 milliseconds, and I'm saying that parent is self, which is queue widget, uh, basically the queue object of queue widget, and I'm creating a, a, a small check val uh, function here uh, just to print out the value, and I'm connecting when the value changes on the timeline, I'm connecting to that function and to print that value and then I'm starting the timeline. So if I now run this, 
you can see the value here I just close that and you can see that it goes from 0 to 1 and with the 0 to 1 value we can do let me just show you something here I can grab a Q point F which is the float version of a Q point and I can multiply it by a decimal number like that and that will give us that okay you'll see where I'm going with this in just a second for now I need to turn my Q point list into a Q point F list float list which means that down here on the mouse press event I no longer need to turn this into a integer point I can use a floating a floater point and here in my Q line I can use a Q line float and now I should have the same result but with float point precision so let's take care of these two methods here and we know that start is going to play forward so it's going to be self timeline start first we want to make it go forward so we can say set time set direction Q timeline forward and to reverse is basically the same thing but backwards just like that okay so that's taken care of for now and let's create a, a value change method for our timeline to see if everything is working I'll just on these new methods I'll just print the value so if we go back to our main and we press start you can see it goes from 0 to 1 and reverse goes from 1 to 0 let's take care of this line in a different way I'll initialize the line when I initialize the widget with a value of none and then I can only create the line well I could create it in a different way with just empty points but uh, creating the line makes more sense creating it here in the mouse press event so I'll bring this code down to the mouse press event and here when I draw that line I'll create or self line instead and here I'll set self line to be that and of course it makes sense that I first append the, the point now I don't want my painter to draw the line if the line doesn't exist so I can say if self line then you can draw the line now there's many ways we could do this uh, I'm gonna choose a way where we're gonna have two lines we're going to have a line that is the target line and a line that is going to be animated. The target line is never going to be seen. The only line that we'll see is the animated line. So I'll turn these guys into anim line. And I'll create this new variable anim line appear in the init function. And now we have a line that is already created and a line that we can create based on the created line so why am I doing this because QLineF has a method called point at and 0 is where the line starts 1 is where the line ends 0 5 would be the middle of the line and it gives me a point so that's the point that I'm gonna use for the end of my dynamic line, my anim line. Because right here val goes from 0 to 1, the value of our timeline. I can place that in there. This is going to output a Q point. So this is going to be the end of the line. So my animation line is going to be a Q line F and its first point is going to be our line that is already created point one I could also grab just the first point in the list obviously and it, the second point is going to be the end of the line so all I need to do now is update so that the painter gets updated if I save this and go into my main I can now create a line press start reverse okay let's add a Q easing curve 
so it make that prettier just like so adding a using curve to the timeline and now we can test it there we go to do a stroke animation on a path things would get really complicated if we try to use the same technique so to stroke a path, I'm going to show you a different technique. But first, let's look at paths and how, can, and how we can create paths. You can start a path by placing it inside a variable, saying QPainter path, and passing in a point where the path is going to start. It can be a Q point or a Q point F. You can also start an empty path, just like that, and then move your brush with the move to function to a position, an X and Y position. You can look at the move to method as the painter is lifting his brush off the canvas, moving to a different position, and then it will start painting from that position. So a move to doesn't actually create a stroke, it just moves to a different position to start painting again. Anytime I can, I like to start my puffs like that. This way I don't have to use the move to uh, function in the beginning. So I'm doing, I'm starting at 50x and 50y, and then I'm using the line 2 method to create a line at 50x and 200y. And then I'm drawing my puff on my cube painter. And the result is this line here so as you can see 50 X and 50 Y and then all down here 50 X and Y 200 let's draw another line in this time to 200 from the X and 50 to the Y so I'll go back up and I'll get this result so from 50 and 200 to 250 now we can close this path using a method called close subpath and by doing this it will automatically draw a line from where the path was ending to where the path is started an alternative to that would be to grab the element at zero and the element at zero was created right here when we created the path that's a move to element we move the brush to 50-50 so we can start painting. So if I say align to element at and 0, which is element 0, and this would be element 1, and this would be element 2, so if I do that, I basically close do have the same result as closing the subpath. The reason why I'm showing you this is because If I wanted to close my path with a quadratic Bezier curve, for example, I could use that piece of information to figure out where my path is starting. Of course, I know that my path is starting here. I could just copy this and place it there. But in a more in a dynamic scenario, these can be very helpful. Let's look at this quad two now that we're at it. So quad, quad 2 is a quadratic Bezier curve. And I found this website here that allows us to mess about with, with quadratic curves and so that we can better understand what's going on. So basically a quadratic curve has a start point, has an end point, and a control point. And this control point controls that curve as you can see here. So the quad 2 method takes in a control point and it takes in an end point where is it going to end so basically what i'm doing remember how we had this if i comment this out we finish here we start here we draw down to the air we draw down up to there and now i want to do a quadratic curve to the start point and what i'm doing here in the code 125 on the X and 0 on the Y so basically I'm going to 125 here which is halfway through that line and I'm going to 0 so my control point I'm placing it up here and that should give me an arced type curve there we go 
there's that arc so my control point is right up there at 125 and we get that kind of curve now I'm going to show you a technique where you can, how you can animate stroking the path pen using path offset before we do that I just want to look at the cubic bezier curve and you can call that by using the cubic 2 method here we go cubic 2 and we got control point 1 control point 2 and the end point so this is how a cubic 2 curve works and if I look at that website at what we where we were this would be the start point and we don't have a start point when we're working with paths because the start point is the current point is wherever you are this would be the end point so and this would be control point 1 and this would be control point 2 so where we are end point control point 1 control point 2 so, okay so let's do our line dash offset animation for that I'm gonna need two variables on my init function up here and that's gonna be dash offset and dash length which we will calculate and I'm gonna go down to my paint event here and you can see that I'm placing my pen here inside a variable that I can access later on and I'm setting the QPainter pen to it so let me just start with a pen width of one pixel and to see that line I'm gonna remove my path fill by removing the brush so now we should have a one pixel path like that so down here before I draw my path I'm gonna we're gonna look at set dash pattern set dash pattern works in the following way we need to provide a list with the dash and then let's do a dash of 10 pixels and then a space of 10 pixels and then I'm resetting the pen because I changed the pen but I need to reset it again so that's gonna give us a dash of 10 pixels and then a space of 10 pixels dash 10 pixels space 10 pixels so if I now I can grab the path length okay by using the length prop, uh, function and I'll place that inside of my dash length variable and now if I place this dash length to be size of one dash and the size of one space and I run this what's happening now is that I have one dash that occupies the whole path now with the method set dash offset we can move our dash pattern so if I say set the dash offset to be the same to the to be the the dash length there's nothing there because what we're looking at right now is the dash space this space right here the second argument of course I can keep going with this list just to let you know about that so if I say that I break this into two now you can see that only half my path gets drawn for now I'm going to place here the variable I created before called dash offset and I'm gonna animate that variable up here when my timeline changes and remember that this value goes from 0 to 1 so I can do is say that my dash offset equals the value that goes from 0 to 1 times the dash length or the other way around so we know that multiplying a number by 0 0.8 gives gives us 80 percent of that number multiplying it by 0 0.1 gives us 10 percent multiplying by 1 gives us 100 percent of that value so by doing this if I go back to my main here where I have my animation and I press start you can see that it was animated and to to be, to have a better perception I'm gonna turn my easing curve to linear by just not giving it an easy curve and this time around it goes at the same speed okay and I'll even make this a bit slower so we can actually see it in action
okay? Actually, the default is not linear. I want it to be linear. It's good to have this in linear when you're working with anim uh, with creating these types of, of animations so that... Okay. Okay, that's linear. Perfect. But see that we're not drawing the line. We are like play is reverse and reverse is kind of play. So to fix that we can come down here where we got the dash offset being set as the dash offset and instead of that we can say the dash length minus the dash offset and now we have the result we wanted. Now we're not done yet and I'll show you why. If I change my pen width to 10 pixels for example and I try that again you see it was a lot faster and when I press reverse it takes forever to start. This is because the dash length is not the same as the puff length because if I go to the documentation to the QPen you can see we have the information right here when we're setting the dash pattern notice that the dash pattern is specified in units of pen width example a dash length of 5 pixels with the pen width of 10 50 pixels is 50 pixels long okay so in order to account for that what we can do is we can divide this by our pen width and now you can see we have the the right length and it works perfectly of course this this doesn't really fill the puff and i can set a brush here and you can see that the puff is already there if I fill it. We're only doing the stroke, okay? To make the puff move as you do the stroke, that would take a lot of computation, a lot of maths. And uh, if you want to try it, you're more than welcome to. But I'm not going to show you that because I don't want to spend a week here because <laughs> trying to do that because I'm not a math brainiac, okay? Okay, let's make it so that I can draw, I can click and add points like we were doing before, creating a path in that way, and then draw uh, the, the line connecting the points. So I'm going to create a save state here to save my pen as it is, because I want to my points to be on top of the path. So down here... I'll add a restore and then I'll draw the points and for my puff I'll do something very similar but this time only if we have a puff because I'm gonna create a puff as I place the points on, on screen and I'm just shortening the puff here and doing the same thing that we were doing before so I'm gonna need that puff variable to be initialized so I'm placing it up there and on our mouse press event I'm grabbing here the mouse position. I'm appending the point. This is when I press okay, the, the mouse on the screen. I'm appending the point to a points list. And then I'm saying if the length of points is bigger than one, I'll do a line two. If it's not bigger than one, if it's still zero, then I'll create an uh, I'll create a path at that position where I clicked and I'll place that in, I, in our path variable. So now I can do my own path like that and I can stroke it like that with our animation and reverse it. Now a problem with this technique is that if you add a closed path to our path like adding a rect, a rect is a closed path now I just add a point because we already have a rect here and I press start 
you can see it works well when we have just that path, that closed path. But if I add more than one path, so direct and then align, this is what happens. Okay, so there are limitations to this path stroking uh, method. This also works with text. So if, for example, I have only one letter here saying add text to that point where we started and then uh, give it a font and just say we're going to draw an H as a text and I at the point here you can see it draws the, that H like that. Now if I do a let, uh, some more letters like hello and I'll just speed these up, I have these at 5 seconds I'll speed it up to two seconds here. Let's see what happens. Okay, you can see that. Let's do that again. Each letter is a puff. So we're stroking each letter at the same speed. Okay, so that's one of the limitations with this process, with this technique. In the next video, we're going to look at um, puff animation. And some cool stuff that we can do with point at percent. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next video.